Good morning, good morning. Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. Uh, we're going to wait for Chris to jump in here and, and then we'll be off and running. It's been a, a little sporadic here lately, but, uh, but we will be doing more of these uh, as, soon as, my, as soon as my child is born. Then we'll be, uh, we'll be good to go. So the schedule should uh, straighten out, I would think, but we'll, uh, we'll figure it out from there. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get Chris in, and once he's here, then we will, uh, we will go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Let's see. I don't see yet, but we'll get there. So we are 45 seconds in. Normally it takes about a minute. Da, da, da. There we go. We're going to add Chris, bring him, and then let's see what happens. Good morning. What's up? How are you? I'm doing well. Good deal. So it, it's been, what, about a week and a half since we've done one of these? No, it's been a week. I mean, we did it last Monday. Yeah, I guess that's right. So it's, yeah, well, it's we, Wednesday morning. Yeah, yeah, week and a half. Round about. Round about. All right, let's... uh. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Are you ready to uh, – have you shared out yet? No, go ahead. You keep talking, I'll share. Okay. All right, you go ahead and, uh, and share out. I'll start the bad boy up. Let's do this. All right, three, two, one. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything, number 212. It is the Wednesday, April 25th edition of the show. Uh, as usual, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, – well, first off, mybookie.ag. If you are a gambler, if you enjoy sports wagering, go ahead and fire that thing up. Go put in the promo code WCE50. They've got the best online odds. They've got the best online sports book. It's easy to use. You get payouts in two business days. It's super simple. You will enjoy it. Go check it out. Mybookie.ag. Use promo code WCE50, WCE50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Um, from there... Let's talk about today's uh, topics of conversation. Sound good? We've got five topics. Now, Chris, that's, I hit on that, every one of them. That's four too many. <laughs> well, I hit, on, I hit on three that you wanted, specifically. Well, time is of the essence on one of them, so. Okay, we can do that. Um, the NFL draft, we're going to discuss that because that happens tomorrow night. First round tomorrow night. We're going to talk about quarterbacks, running backs, conference affiliations, all sorts of different stuff, right? We'll talk about that. We're going to talk uh, the NBA playoffs, uh, what's going on there. We're going to talk uh, gambling on both of those. Uh, we're going to talk the NHL playoffs. You have some gambling tips, some gambling trends that you like a lot. So we'll talk about those. Uh, the Commission on College Basketball had a press conference this morning. We're not going to spend long on that, but it is something that I feel like you and I both would like to touch on. Uh, and I doubt that we're going to spend more than like two, three minutes on that. And then let's, finally, let's touch on it. And then let's move on because we can break that down later. That'll be going oh, yeah. on for a long time. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, finally, the, uh, we're going to have a conversation about the possibility of Alabama quarterback Jalen Hurts transferring. We haven't gotten to talk since the, uh, the A-Day game this past weekend, uh, and things did not go well. But we'll, we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about uh, some of the things that you and I discussed last night. Okay. So, first off, uh, the, the show is always brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. Uh, go check it out for the best news, notes, stories, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, eventually, it will be back up to, uh, to posting stories more regularly. Uh, once my son arrives, then, and then I feel like I might be able to, to get a little more of a schedule uh, situated. But right now, it's been a little crazy. Uh, but we do have some good stuff up on the site. McKinnon's going to have an article up today uh, about the NFL draft running backs. Um, so that's, I'm looking forward to that. So go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Also, give us a like on Facebook. Share that thing out. Share the show out. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. Chris, let's start off with, uh, with the NFL draft. All right. all right. Where do you want to start? All right. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Uh, Adam Schefter tweeted out that Baker Mayfield is very much in the conversation for the number one pick. And then other sources from Cleveland.com, which is the big Cleveland, Ohio news site, uh, said that basically it is down to Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield. One, is this legit? And two, does it surprise you at all? 
I don't know that it surprises me just because Cleveland can't get out of their own way. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Let, let, before we have this conversation, okay, we, okay. I, I do think this is going to be an unpredictable draft. This could all just be smoke and mirrors. Yeah. But I don't understand why the number one pick ever does smoke and mirrors. Like, why? why what do you have to gain – to play games with everybody on who you're going to take first. Nobody it's can get in front question. of you. I, I've never understood why, unless they feel like they want to trade out of it and someone thinks, oh, well, I can get Baker Mayfield with the third pick or the fifth pick or whatever, and uh, well, maybe I can't. So maybe I got to jump up. The only reason you would play games like this if you're Cleveland is if you're trying to move the pick. That's, that's it because nobody can pick in front of you. I agree. So let me ask you a question. Okay. They are projecting six quarterbacks. We know them well to possibly go in the first round. How would you That's rank not these, surprising. How would you rank these six? If you are going to take a quarterback to run your franchise. At, well, I've told you before I would take Darnold first. Um, I might. Can you take explain Mayfield. why? I just want to know why. I think that he's a, a better leader than the rest of these guys. Like, I, Mayfield, I feel like, is a great leader. I'd probably have Mayfield at number two. Like, going over everything from last year. If I'm So, if you only care games, about leadership, Josh Allen is the best leader out of all of them. Everybody I, at the Combine, everybody at the Senior Bowl, and every person that's I, I ever played I don't think it's just that. Them. Okay, all right. Like, I, it, it's, not, it's not just that. Like, it's, okay. it's a combination of all of these different factors, right? Josh Allen is not, uh, you know, what, uh, what Carson Wentz was. He's just not. I agree. Like, not going to argue it, on that. So, I'm just when you said leadership, I'm yeah. thinking, what makes those guys better leaders than the other guys? Because they're not a better leader than Josh. Now, what I'm worried about with with Darnold is he's still pretty young, right? Like he's uh, he was a redshirt uh, sophomore yeah. this past year. So, you know, it's one of those where like, well, you've got all the talent and people are going to pick you highly, so. You got to go now, otherwise you end up with a Matt Liner kind of situation, right? So you got, so you so, got Darnold, you got, you got Baker. How else? I got Darnold. Around? I got Baker number two. I've got, uh, I'd probably have Rosen three. I might have Mason Rudolph four. Okay. And then I'd have Josh Allen and then Lamar Jackson. I don't like Lamar Jackson as a quarterback prospect. I like, think that's I, ridiculous. I feel that's. That's just my opinion. What would be I your reasoning like, behind uh, it? What would be your logic and reasoning why you don't want him as Too many interceptions. <laughs> makes awful decisions. What? Sam Darnold leads all these quarterbacks in turnovers and interceptions. Agreed. I've seen Darnold in a season when he didn't do that. This year, he didn't have an offensive line with him. So, I look, a lot of the interceptions that I saw Darnold throw were rush passes. So – it was a little different situation this year than it was last year. With Lamar Jackson, he just makes bad reads. Like, we, we have both watched these players, and I, I, I can see what they're doing. Like, Lamar Jackson is not great at reading a defense. I feel like Sam Darnold is. Like, and these are things, I mean, Jared Goff led, the, uh, led college football in interceptions in his senior season, and he still got drafted number one overall. We thought it might be a dumb pick, but, I mean, you see what he's doing in the NFL now. I think that's a bit of a system because I saw him one year and he was god-awful. Then I saw him the yeah. next and he looked good, not great. So, Oh, he's great in McVay's let's, offense. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's be careful before we crown golf I'm unbelievable. I'm not saying golf's okay. great. I'm not saying he's unbelievable. I'm saying he looked a lot better this year. Not you one person would take him. golf over Gwentz today. Not one person. I believe that uh, whole. I got, I'm with you. I'm with you 100. percent So I I would have Lamar Jackson at the end of that. I I think he's talented. I don't like that he was not willing to do whatever NFL teams wanted him to do. That's dumb. Like that just seemed ridiculous to me. That's just a dumb argument. He didn't want to run the 40. We know he's the fastest out of all the quarterbacks. It's a meaningless race. It's a meaningless I race. I agree. The 40. He the beats 40 everybody. Is gone. I'm not saying seconds. the 40. That's I'm not saying just do. the 40. But that's I'm all saying he didn't do. why it, he is telling people that he is unwilling to, to do re- anything else. He's unwilling to play before. another position. Sam, they're not asking Sam Darnold to play another position. 
No, because he wouldn't play – like, he can't play another position. Lamar I, okay. Jackson could let me, easily let me tell play you, something If else. I'm picking quarterback right now, and you tell me I have – I only have one pick, I don't have any other option, and I have to pick the guy to lead my franchise, I'm taking Lamar Jackson number one out of all of these guys. And it's not close. Explain why. Okay, I'll, I'll exactly why. Because I watch football. All right, so we remember the Rose Bowl. We remember how great Sam Darnold was in that game. Brother, that game doesn't fit the top five of, of uh, Lamar Jackson's tape. Lamar Jackson is the most, um, like, accredited and acclaimed based on awards that he has won, quarterback that's coming out of this. He's the only quarterback coming out in this draft that's been in a pro-style offense for three years under a pro-style head coach, not a spread offense, so he's going to adapt quicker than everybody else. And he – can do things that the other four not even close to being considered can do with his legs and what he does in running the football. This run-pass option that's coming into the NFL, this guy, we watched we watched uh, Watson and Darnold, okay. uh, Watson and Jackson have this duel against uh, two years ago, Clemson and Louisville. And it was one of the greatest college football games we have all ever seen. All right? It's okay. one of the best. Why do we think he can't be Deshaun Watson? Why, why do we just think that he can't be? I don't understand. I, all of the reasons why people don't like him, I think, are complete bunk. I don't know how you know that he's not a good leader. I think that's ridiculous. The fact that he doesn't want to play another position, we didn't ask uh, Deshaun Watson to play another position, that's ridiculous. Um, and, and we're not asking anybody else to. So the fact that he has the ability to play another position isn't okay. It's not fair. He wants to play quarterback. He should be able to play quarterback until he's proven that he can. And, the, and I'm not saying that he, that he has to do something else. Otherwise, he won't make it in the NFL. I don't think that he's going to make it as a starter in the NFL. That's just me. And well, it, look, we were all proven wrong with Michael Vick. None of us believed that he would be. But Michael Vick was taken right? number one overall, so so some people didn't believe. But hell, the Vikings did, or the, right. the the Falcons did. Yeah, they they knew what was going on. So I mean, so they knew exactly my, what was my going number on. my number two would be Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen was acclaimed the second coming to the great quarterback back when he was in high school. This guy has been preparing for this league forever. The knocks on him, I also find completely ridiculous. He's the most accurate out of all of them, and I think he's probably the best overall well-rounded quarterback ready to come in, step in, and play tomorrow. That's who I would take number two after uh, Jackson. Um, my knocks on Sam Darnold, and this is why Darnold would be fifth in this whole thing for me. Darnold is without Darnold question. Darnold would be fifth. Yeah, is without question the safest pick. He has the highest ceiling of them all, or highest floor of them all. I think he has the lowest ceiling. Let me tell you a group of guys that I think Sam Darnold, we're going to look back. And here's the deal. If Sam Darnold does what these quarterbacks have done, they'll build statues okay. to him in Cleveland. But it's not what I want, okay? I think Sam Darnold's ceiling is making some playoff games, winning games in Cleveland, and that's it. I think he's Andy Dalton. I think he's going to be Kirk Cousins. I think he's going to be, you know, Alex Smith. Those are good quarterbacks. Those are Pro Bowl quarterbacks. Guess what? They can't yeah. win a playoff game. We'll never win a championship with those guys. You know what happens if I take Lamar Jackson number one overall? I know in two years if I can win or not. Guess what? Okay. The, the I Bengals, like your idea the Bengals have been stuck with Andy Dalton for a decade. All right? Thinking that he might eventually be and able to do something. No, right? no, no. Not thinking that he's going to do anything. They know exactly what they have with him. Here's the problem. He's too good to fire. He's too good to let go, but he's not good enough to win you anything. That's yeah. the problem. And I don't want to be stuck in no man's land. I don't want to be stuck with Jameis Winston as my quarterback, making just enough plays to, to look really good sometimes, but half the time he's a bumbling idiot, and we can't win the big game. I don't want that. I want to know, is this guy going to win or not in the first two years? Yeah, I. That's why. So that's why I would take Josh sense. Allen. That's why I'd take Josh Allen third, and that's why I would probably take Mason Rudolph next, and then I'd take Sam Darnold last. Darnold is the safest, but I'm not here to be safe. Safe gets you Andy Dalton. Safe gets you Alex Smith. Tell me how many playoff yeah. games those guys have won. 
Now they've made a bunch of Pro Bowls, bro. They go, they they live in Hawaii in the off season because that's where they go every year. Yeah, the most important thing is winning playoff games. And winning neither one of those guys can do it. They can't do it. And so, would you rather be eight and eight and losing the first round of the playoff games, making a wild card every year, or would you rather be zero and sixteen, zero and sixteen, zero and sixteen? Bam, this guy can win a Super Bowl. Because yeah. I'll take the rings. Okay. I, I like your thinking here. I, I think that NFL GMs, some of them may think differently. Oh, they but, think but you're going at it because the they way all that, care like, about the, their job. If, right. If Sam you're, Darnold you're wins eight games in that, Cleveland, he's, he's a god, and it's just the wrong way to think. Yeah. No, you're thinking the way that the 76ers think in basketball. Damn Whereas straight. Tank, 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 tank until you get players that can win a championship. Otherwise, what is the point? Well, I don't know right? that they're tanking, okay? I think they're trying to well, win the, these the games. The Sixers are not tanking. Well, like, yeah. The Sixers are fine right now. Well, I'm talking about Browns. Okay. They're not tanking. Oh, the they're Browns. just bad. There's a difference. I don't think yeah, they're, they're losing bad, on but purpose. That's, but that's they're what you're bad. saying, basically, is if we, like, just keep drafting quarterbacks until you find one that can stick. I would just know rather can, can know. Go out. I would rather know yeah. quickly, is this guy got it or not? Because I think if the Lamar Jackson uh, experiment works – I think he's going to lead people to championships. And if he doesn't, he'll be off a roster in two years and you'll draft another one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to running backs real quick. We, we spent a long time on that. But uh, we need back, to found, because that's the most important position. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's going to detail, like, it's going to basically shift how the whole rest of the draft goes. If Mayfield goes one, that could end up changing up every other pick in the draft. I also, so I didn't even bring up Mayfield in that. I'm, I'm not a Mayfield guy, and, and I'll tell you the biggest reason. Name a single quarterback in the NFL that has been successful being a cocky, arrogant prick, throwing his shit That's all my around. problem with him. Not one That's single quarterback. Because in the NFL, the boys on the defensive side of the ball, they don't take that crap very long. They don't. Yeah. No, you're, you're 100% right. And 100% so, right. So that is my reason for I would stay away from Baker Mayfield. Now, whoever the Browns draft, I will support. I love Josh Allen's leadership. Josh Allen's completion percentage is scary. I mean, it's oh, just it's, real. I mean, it's lower than 60%. It's, it's really no, bad. Yeah, yeah, it's scary. And it's – Chris I don't know Sims was better. talking about, uh, about his uh, – the yards per attempt and whatnot – and they were comparing it to, like, Baker Mayfield and all this, and, and he was saying, like, that's why you take Josh Allen because, like, yeah, his completion percentage might be lower, but that's because he was throwing the ball further, and blah, which is a complete lie. It's just lazy. Yeah. He didn't do his research yeah. because Josh Allen's was, like, eight yards of an attempt, and Baker Mayfield's was over 12 per attempt. Like, I, I, will, I will tell it's you, insane. every person that's ever met Josh Allen follows that guy. There are GMs. There are sports writers or everybody that's wanting to follow him. When you want leadership, yeah. man, he's got it. He's got it. Now, can can he be Blake Bortles, who won a playoff game and almost beat the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl? If the team is good enough around him, I like him better yeah. than Blake. I like him a hell of a lot better well, than that's, Blake. People, people seem to forget that. Like, there are 11 players – on offense, that's right, and there are eleven players on defense, and then you you got a kicker and everything. You got to have everything right around you. Like there the is, Eagles this year, they didn't yeah. win because of Nick Foles. Oh, God, like no. that's not why they won a championship. No. Like they won because they had such a foundation built. And which people is, just seem to forget that. Which is why, if I'm, I'm wearing my Browns gear, I'll be wearing it all week. Yep, rebuilding since <laughs> 1999. Um, there you go. Uh, if I was the Browns. I would draft Barkley one. I would draft Chubb four. We have three second round picks. I trade all the picks I have to trade to get back into the first round and take Jackson. And now you okay. hand Jackson the keys to a damn Lamborghini. And you say, let's go. <laughs> Josh Gordon's back. We don't know what he's going to look like. We've got uh, 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 Landry signed up. You've got Hyde yep. in the backfield to help. Pound the rock between the guards. A great yeah, you, offensive line. You've got line. talent. You have a lot of talent. And with Chubbs and Let's, Miles uh, coming off the edge. You, All right, you bring going up, to running back. You bring up Barkley. Yep. Um, the, the most anticipated landing spot for him is at two with the, the Giants. Yeah. I found this stat interesting. If the Giants select Barkley, uh, no, yeah, Barkley number two 
on Thursday, he will be awarded a four-year deal worth about $7.8 million per year, which would rank fourth among all active running backs in the NFL. Is Barkley worth that much to a franchise right now? Yeah, because I think rookie running backs are just as good as veteran running backs. They're probably better because they have less miles. If, if you're not certain of what he is, though, do you not think that you uh, can I, find somebody I, later in the draft? Unless it's an injury comes up, you're certain. I mean, the only thing – but you can't predict injury for running backs at all. Agreed. Agreed. Like, so, uh, tell, me, tell me why you believe in him so much. Like, I, I, I looked at – like, if you look at just his stats and what he did in some of these games, like, he was not impressive against some uh, teams that were not great. The, like, college, it, the college game is different than the pro game. Okay, that's just a fact. To spread the ball in, in the pros, you don't run spread offenses. They run pro offenses. To spread the ball in the pros, you run what you spread it with your running backs. Uh, Mike, I, I, this is not an original thought to me. Mike Lombardi talks about this. He's way smarter about okay. football than I'll ever be. Um, listen to his podcast. You'll learn more. Uh, but it's he talks about how you have to be able to spread. If you want to spread the field, you use the running back to do that. He's the, he's the running back coming out of this draft that can do that better than anybody else. He catches the ball like a slot receiver, so that gives you versatility and dynamic um, uh, part of your game that nobody else gives you. Uh, Zeke Elliott doesn't do that. Uh, Gurley doesn't do that. The two running backs that came out the two years before him, they're just not as good as him. Cook from last year doesn't do that, Um, and and neither does Leonard Fournette. He does something that nobody else can do. The comparison that everybody's making to him which is an accurate one, is Le'Veon Bell. Would you pay Le'Veon Bell that? Yeah, you'd pay Le'Veon Bell more than that. Le'Veon Bell sense. wants to get paid like a wide receiver because he is more of a wide receiver than a running back. He just comes out of the backfield. Uh, that makes sense. So, so if you're getting an average pay, top pay running back, but you're getting productivity like a wide receiver, then then you're 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 in the positive side of the of the cap there. Gotcha. Okay. So, okay. I'm with I you. think I think he's more valuable than Zeke, and Zeke will be drafted was drafted fourth, which the pay it and a whole lot different from there. Yeah. So I mean I would rather have Barkley than Zeke all day long. Zeke is a beast of a running back, but he can't do what Barkley can do in the backfield, which also I think is gonna lend to Barkley having a longer career. You draft a guy second overall, you want him to be on your team for a decade. Yeah, you want him there for as long as humanly possible. You don't want to waste that pick. That's right. Uh, next, next thing I want to talk about as far as the draft goes, and this won't take long, but uh, the breakdown of SEC teams with first-round draft picks. I found these numbers incredibly interesting. All right, so we, is this we from Felica? No, this is um, Saturday Down South. Felica, Felica put out a, a tweet well, Felica put a couple out days something ago. Saying, saying that the SEC uh, has led the NFL draft with most players selected since like 2000. Six or five yeah, or something. He like that. went. He went back a long way. Yeah. And so, and it's it's they've averaged over fifty draft picks. And how many draft picks are there? One hundred and seventy nine. I don't know how far in the draft he went. He just did drafted players, right? Not well, no, like no, first yeah, round, drafted, second round. Yeah, just drafted players overall. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm trying to think. Like I think in the in the entire NFL draft in seven rounds. There's like 170 something players. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, but it'd be 32 um, times seven. Yeah, so whatever that is. Either way, uh, each this is how every school breaks down. 200 as far as from 224. Okay, there we go. So in the SEC has had over 50 every year. So they've had uh, what about 20 percent mm-hmm. every every time. That's crazy, uh, considering how many more you know big time programs there are. Uh, let's talk about this. Um, look, I was shocked by this. Over the last 10 years, now we know Alabama's got 22 first-round draft picks in the last 10 years. That's expected. You get five national championships. It is what it is. But if you look at the rest of the SEC, who would you say the second-best program has been over the last 10 years? Well, I don't know about 10 years, but I know the last five years has been LSU. Not even close. Right, but- if, LSU's if go got back, more than Alabama. If you go back to 2008, like that just overall, the number two team that has the most first-round draft picks all the way back to 08, 
Florida with 14. That doesn't surprise me. It would either be Florida, Georgia, or LSU, or Auburn. Those are well, Alabama. Those are the big schools. Here's Florida. Here, Florida had 14. LSU's got 11. After that, you've got Texas a with nine. Then you have, and, and this will be shocking, I think, Missouri with eight. You've got Georgia with seven, Tennessee with seven. You've got uh, Auburn with four. In ten years, Auburn's had four first-round draft picks. Uh, Ole Miss has got six. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't toss them in there. Uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see, Arkansas with two, Mississippi State with two, South Carolina with three, Vanderbilt with one. Like we're, it, it was shocking to me, one, that Florida was second-ranked. No. That. Well, you're talking about you get the Urban Meyer years in there. They were they won two national championships. I mean. Well, no, you're, you're only going back to 08, though. So they, they won one national championship in 08. Okay. And that was it. But that's and then they the had Urban the years. 2009 team. But yeah. then 2010 was Urban's last year. But that's so, not. So, I mean, they would, have had, they would have had to have had a ton no, they wouldn't in that have. time span. They could have. LSU in the last five years has more than any school in the country. Okay. More first-round draft picks? Yeah. They got more people in the – I don't know about first round. I know we got more people in the NFL they, they've got than more anybody NFL else. Picks. And it's not even close. Yeah. So I'm just so, looking at first round right but now. I, but, but I'm talking about a small period of time, okay? In that yeah. small period of time, in that three-year window, I bet Florida dominated. I bet they had more people in that three-year window than any other time. And then after that, I dude, they've that. got – They've got players. That whole Will Muschamp era, all those defensive guys went and played pro. All of them. Now, you're right about that. And then McIlwain had several right. receivers go play pro. So that doesn't yeah. shock me. I mean, to get to 11, you don't – I mean, that's not – 11 in 10 years is one a year. Yeah. That's not that many. If Urban put three in a year for his, you know, first two – or two in a year for his first three years, that's six of the 11. That's a good point. It's a good point. So let's uh, let's jump off that. I want to talk about the NBA playoffs a little bit. Okay. Um, let me let me set it up for you. How's that? Sixers won last night over the Heat. They won uh, four games to one. So Philly awaits the winner of the Celtics and Bucks series, uh, and that's three two Celtics right now. Uh, I, I've got an interesting stat from that, by the way. I read this yesterday, and I did not realize it. Uh, do you know the last year that the Sixers didn't just make the playoffs, but made it to the second round of the playoffs? Oh, I'd have no idea. Moses Malone? It was 2012. Oh, with Allen Iverson. Was That's, that AI? Was Iver- uh, no, no, I don't think no, Iverson was, was in 12. after Iverson. Yeah. I, I was super shocked by that. Like, I, I could not believe that they made it that year. What uh, did that and I team didn't do look enough like? research, but I have no idea. Um, there was a year. I they, mean, they signed Iguodala back when Iguodala was the first free agent. I remember that. That's that's got to be when it was. That had to be when it was because he was a superstar then. Let's see. I'd be curious to know who else was on that roster. I've got it pulled up right here. Uh, Lavoy was... Allen, Tony Batie, Craig Brackens, Elton Brand, okay, Elton Francisco Brand Elson, uh, Spencer Hawes, Drew Holiday, uh, Andre Iguodala, Jody Meeks, uh, yeah. Sam Young, Thaddeus Young, Lou Williams, Evan Turner. Xavier Silas. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, El- oh, Nick- Elton Nikolai Vojacic. Yeah, Elton Elton Brand and 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 uh, and uh, Iguodala. That's a that's a pretty dangerous combination. Yeah, that's that's not a bad uh, that's not a bad no. go of it. Um, all right, so the so the Sixers win. They're moving on to the second round of playoffs, first time since 2012. Uh, the Warriors beat the Spurs last night, so uh, so they win and they uh, they move on. They're matching up with the Pelicans. Um, and the Pelicans swept the Blazers. So here's what we've got left over in the NBA right now. We've got the Celtics, 3-2 to over the Bucks right now. So they're going back to Milwaukee for game six. The Celtics for the series are minus 350 on the, on the betting line. So, and if you weren't with us earlier, mybookie.ag, go check it out, sign up. Sign up with the promo code WCE50, and they will hook you up with a 50% deposit bonus. Um, And you can bet on all these lines. All these lines come from mybookie.ag. But the Celtics are minus 350 for the series. The Bucks are plus 280. That surprised me because the Celtics are already up 3-2. to Like, I literally just got these lines before we went live. Uh, The Raptors and Wizards are tied 2-2. to The Raptors are minus 360. The Wizards are plus 290. So the Celtics have, like, lower odds 
on them, even though they're up 3-2, than the Raptors at 2-2. Uh, the Cavs and Pacers are tied 2-2. The Cavs are minus 370, and the Pacers are plus 300. So if you wanted to make some money and you think the Pacers are going to win, you can get them on the series at plus 300. The last two, there's no line on the Rockets 3-1 to over the Timberwolves. Um, and then the Jazz 3-1 to over the Thunder. The Jazz are minus 900. The Thunder plus 600. Uh, tell me what you're thinking right now. Are, are there any good deals that you hear there that people should jump in on? Or is there anything? They haven't announced the line for the Pelicans. Well, yeah, the, the Warriors uh, we don't have the line for the second round, and we're too late to the ball game to the middle. Round. If I had to pick anything, what would you say the, the line was for uh, the Wizards? Uh, the Wizards are plus 290 against the Raptors. I would take – and, it, and it's two to two. You would take the I would Wizards? Take the, I would take the Wizards. See, that's a, that's an eight against a one. Yeah, but they're not an and, eight seed. They they intentionally – And I don't tanked, know that the Raptors are a one either. Yeah, they, 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 they intentionally tanked to get to that spot because they wanted to play Boston in the second round, um, not Cleveland. That's – they tried to strategically put themselves there. So, oh, okay. So they, they wanted to play the Raptors – and um, they were assuming that Cleveland would win their round. They don't. They don't want to play Cleveland in the second round. They'd rather play Boston. Or well, no. Here's the deal. Milwaukee. Cleveland. Cleveland is the four seed. Yeah. So they, yeah, they messed gonna, that up. The four, no, they didn't. The four seed's going to play the winner of the one seed. The NBA reseeds. No, the NBA. No, they don't reseed. No, it's just a regular playoff. Like it's, it's a, regular a bracket. bracket. I thought yeah. they were doing reseeding last year. No, it's uh, Toronto. Like the the winner of the Cavs Pacers series is playing the winner of the Toronto. Uh, uh, oh, then they messed Wizards that up. Seed. But the, yeah, they way, messed it up. Either way, the Wizards the Wizards are not an, an eight seed in this, and it's not close. Yeah, it's uh, they now they were without John Wall for a long time. Oh, over um, a month. I mean, a yeah, long time. But they but they were actually pretty successful playing that way. But they are. Uh, I mean, they've looked good. I mean, it's it's tied two to two. Um, what do you? Tell me what you think about the Pelicans and Warriors. Like it, it, oh, I'm going to be betting this the all... Pelicans to win that series. I bet the Pelicans to – we didn't talk about this, so I don't get credit for it. But I bet the Pelicans to win that series against uh, uh, the Blazers. I got plus 850 against the Blazers. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember today, you talking about today, it. Today that looks ridiculous. Beforehand, there were people – the Blazers had like the fifth best odds to win the – or the fourth best odds to win the whole thing, the whole championship. Absolutely. So um, – so, you know, they, and they swept them. I'm going to tell you what I am doing from this point forward. I am betting the team with the best player on the team to win the series. That's just it. And, and the is, game, is Anthony Davis better than Kevin, Kevin Durant, Durant or yes. – Yes, he is. Or Steph Curry? Yes. Not close. Not close. Really? Right now, today. We're talking about today. Not, we're talking about a month ago. We're not talking about last year. We're not talking about next year. You're talking about the player that is the hottest right now. Today, right now, Anthony Davis is the best player in basketball. He's better than LeBron. Anthony, and, He's better than all of them. And Drew, and Drew Holiday is and Drew Holiday is world a right grown-ass man. <laughs> Drew Holiday is, if you, took, if you took the scoring of Kawhi Leonard and the defense of Tony Allen and you put them together and made a dude, that's Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday that's your dude. plus 40 in the last game. 40. <laughs> yeah. LeBron hadn't dropped 40. KD hadn't dropped 40. Westbrook yeah, no, you're forward. you're right. It's it's pretty bonkers. Before, it's before all and, I, bonkers. and I'll tell you my losses too. So before before in round one, I had a bet on the Jazz to win their series. Got plus odds there, but it was only like plus two fifty, plus two seventy five, yeah, something it, like it that. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't crazy. I got the Pelicans at plus one uh, eight fifty. Um, I got the Heat at like plus three something or another. Going to lose that or did lose that. Um, and then I have the Jazz uh, – not the Jazz, I already said the Jazz. And then I had the uh, Wizards to uh, to win at plus – they were at like plus 235 or something like that. It wasn't great. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great odds. But, it, but yeah. it's still better than – No, know, it's than better than positive. I bet, all, I bet all dogs, and, and, I, and I'm looking – I'm going to – I think the Jazz are going to win. I'm going to win two of them. I can lose all of them as long as I won the Pelican one. That's – Eight and a half to one odds. That's crazy. Yeah, that'll was, pay for that'll really pay for all odds. my bets for the rest of the for the rest of the time. So, but it's I'll be betting bad. them again against the Warriors. I think they're the best team. I think they're going to wreck. Would it shock me if they made the Western Conference championship or won the Western Conference? No, no. I think they could beat Houston. I think they could. I, I think they could beat anybody in the East today, right now. 
one game matters, one game to end it all, I'm betting them. Do you think – like, would that be good for the NBA to finally yep. get that, that monkey off their back of, well, there's only like two or three teams that can win it every year? Absolutely. This is what the NBA needs, too. This is exactly what the NBA needs to fix that problem. Yeah, because it's and a superstar – that yes. people know. But one superstar, not, not five, not three, yeah. not AAU, friends and family, bullcrap basketball, okay? One dude saying, I'm a grown man, and I'm beating the hell out of everybody, okay? My favorite team to watch outside of the Pelicans right now is this Jazz team. And it's because we're Memphis, and it reminds me most of us, okay? Oh, yeah. They are, they are the island of misfit toys, all right? Mitchell was way underdrafted, should have went way higher than he did, um, and, 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 and has a chip on his shoulder. Rubio has been passed around the league and known as a failure and this, that, and other. Most people can't name five other players on their team, and they what, are – What's the, what's the white guy's name? Joe – Well, what's hang on. Name? Be careful with the white guy because they got like three oh, that nobody knows their name. I know. No. It's the Joe guy that was uh, Gordon They're Hayes talking Hayes. all kind of noise to Paul uh, – uh, Paul, Paul George. Paul George. I kept wanting to say yeah. Paul Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's been entertaining. So I just know him as Joe. I don't remember and his then, last name. And then Gortat is a stud. I will tell you this. Yep. I want to see a Western Conference championship – of the Jazz and the Pelicans. I want to see Gortat oh, that'd be in a seven-game series in Anthony Davis. That's what I want to see. Whew. Gortat was great when he was with the Wizards. I know. He's so much so, fun. And and I, I really thought he was kind of a glue piece that, that held that bunch together. I, but I, They are fun to watch. They are they are an island of misfit toys. They I don't not belong, mind, and I like watching I would, them. I would not mind watching uh, the 76ers and the Pelicans in the NBA oh, Finals. That'd be unbelievable. We get Embiid and, and Davis? Are you crazy? Unreal, right? That and would you be got unbelievable. Ben Simmons, like, oh, and, yeah. and you've got Ben Simmons going back to Louisiana, oh, which is shoot. awesome. That's, right. That's home. So, Drew Holiday yeah. tracing Ben Simmons around? Yeah. Well, Drew Holiday would have no chance. <laughs> ben Simmons is like six foot ten. Dude, so, Drew, Drew Holiday, Holiday is like Tony six Allen. foot, he's, maybe. He's, I know that. He, he's guarding the best player on the other team. As long as uh, he always weak. is. It's, so, it's Tony and, Allen. And playoff Rondo has got to be my favorite Rondo oh, yeah. of all time. He does it every year, no matter where he's playing. So you know, he's always you know, fantastic. You know, in the Rondo playoffs. has won six playoff games straight. Like he hasn't lost a playoff game in several years. Is that right? Well, he won the two Bulls games against the Celtics last year. Then he broke his hand and missed the rest and of the playoffs, he, and, and the Celtics play. won, won, won out. Wow, I completely forgot about that. Playoff Rondo's so a grown man. Let me tell you this. Steph Curry, be very careful. When you come back on a weak ankle, if you try to play point guard, Rondo oh, Lord, is going yeah. to man you up. You better hope that foot's healthy. Oh, big time. Big Playoff time. Rondo I, I ain't no joke. And is Anthony Davis back? will be oh, – I don't know. Oh, if he doesn't come back – I'm definitely taking him. Anthony Davis will be on Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's going to know what it's like to have a size 23 all up his butt. <laughs> I'm I'm looking for a, a Steph Curry, like, injury update. Let's see. Injury report, Steph Curry. Uh, Steve Curry not telling the full truth on Warrior Star. Uh, let's see. Five days ago. Let's see. Oh, man. I don't know. It was it was literally three days ago that uh, that Steve Kerr said that he is not close to playing. Oh, if he doesn't play in the second round, they're not getting out, dude. I want to know what the betting odds are going to be. That might be why the odds aren't out. Is they're trying to they're going to wait till the last minute to see what they get from him. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, that, he's Steve Kerr said he's not anywhere close. I I love. Interesting. I love the Pelicans, especially if he don't play. Oh, my gosh. Oh, big time. Rondo big time. is going to run those guys ragged. Drew Holiday is going to run them ragged. And <laughs> Anthony Davis cannot be stopped. He just can't. Now, you in two to, weeks, uh, we might look back at this and I sound like an idiot. Uh, but, you know, hey, everybody jumps out on a on – a You can't just then, take favorites. Clip. You can't no, just you take can't favorites. Because otherwise you will lose every, every go-round. Every go-round. It won't be worth your money. All right, let's All right. move on to uh, the NFL or NHL playoffs. Excuse me. 
Uh, you've been all over these. Um, I've done well. I've been doing really well. <laughs> Tonight's only NHL game is the Bruins versus the uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's right. Bruins are minus minus 170 on the money line. Spread of uh, of minus one and a half goals has them at plus 165. No, no chance. So they're expecting touch that. Don't touch that. They're expecting that. it to be a one goal game, right? Yeah. So if you're a Maple Leafs backer, you've got them at plus 145 on the money line and plus 200 on or no minus no, it'd be 200 minus on 200 the spread. If you take the spread, minus 200 on the spread. So. I, I like um, the Bruins and my team. I'm, I'm a Boston guy. Well, they're they're at home, right? Yeah, they're at home. Game yeah. sevens are awesome. I can't believe we've only got one game seven out of all these playoffs. It's pretty uh, nuts. Let me tell you what I've been betting a lot. Find wait. Let, let me let me set up the rest of these, and then okay. I want you to give yeah. me give me the trends. Okay. Okay. Um, so the winner of tonight's game faces the Tampa Bay Lightning in the next round. Obviously, there's no odds for that because we don't know who the hell's playing. Um, the other series that start up on Thursday and Friday. The Vegas Golden Knights are minus 135 against the San Jose Sharks at plus 115. The Predators are minus 140 against the Winnipeg Jets at plus 120. The Pittsburgh Penguins minus 130 against the Washington Capitals at plus 110. Now, you've told me you've got some betting trends. Go ahead and tell me how you've been well, doing this. Because well, you've been okay. rolling. Because it's – well, and it's – you don't get this all the time, Okay. All right. Once a team, you got to find a place online that'll let you bet live game action. Once a team goes up two goals, I bet the other team to win. All right, and you usually get this happened last year, and I made a fortune. I made a I made a fortune. Okay. Okay. I I got. You're usually going to get like plus fifteen hundred, plus seventeen hundred, because they're down two zero in a hockey. Yeah, they're down two zero in a hockey game. Yeah, it's it's crazy. The blue. I see the, Kirk has joined yeah, in watching. The blue. The Blue Jackets. <laughs> we're not talking football right now. The Blue Jackets. Uh, the the Columbus Blue Jackets. Their first two games, they yeah. went down 2-0, came back, won both of them. One. What a killing! What a killing! Game three. Did you ever get anything plus like two thousand? Uh, never hit two thousand. Never hit. But plus it was 2, up 000. to seventeen. Oh, but it was I, it, yeah seventeen hundred. I got on the first one. The second one was like 16, 1500. It went down a little bit after they blew the first two point lead. Game three, they got a two point, uh, the Capitals got a two point lead. Uh, the, the Blue Jackets came back and tied it up, took it to overtime. They ended up losing. I didn't win that one, but that one I got plus like 1650 or whatever. Um, and the later the game goes, you just keep getting better odds. Uh, well, yeah. So, so anyway, um, it's just something that, it's not going to hit every time. It is a high risk bet, but it happens in hockey a lot, a lot more than you think. Um, and and if and you're so, down two goals, then obviously those odds are going to be astronomical. Un, All you have to do is hit one of them. That's it. And, and you've paid the rest of your playoff off. The fact that it happened the first two games that happened, and I bet, unbelievable. Uh, well, because that's, I mean, plus 17, you're talking about a $10 bet, ended up making $170. Yeah. And then the other bet that I've been betting is every Penguins game, I bet the over, and every Penguins game they hit the over. Every one of them? Every one of them. The Penguins wow. scored eight goals in their last game anyway. Like, it was like an eight-to-five game. And you're uh, not going to find totals that are much higher than no, that, right? No, the totals are usually seven. Usually they're five and a half, okay? Let's see. The Penguins tonight's, have been like uh, seven. Tonight's Bruins game, yep. uh, the over-under is five and a half. Five and a half. That's what it's always been for every standard game. Penguins are going to be a little higher. They might be up to seven. Uh, uh, Penguins, uh, Penguins Capitals tomorrow night at 6.05 p.m. The over-under is six goals. Oh, put a fortune on the over. I'm talking house note. And let me tell you why. Yeah. The Capitals have the worst defense in the NHL. They just score. But they are the number one point scorer in the league, even more than the Penguins. This is two teams that know how to score. I'm going to bet the house. This guy – is going to make money against this series. I needed to go seven <laughs> games because I need all seven opportunities to bet the over. Well, do not yeah. care who wins, other than the fact that the Penguins have just owned. They are living rent free in Washington. <laughs> they have just love dominated that series. Anyway, that's our hockey talk. I've made uh, a lot of money off betting hockey lately. I love t- it. Tell me about the Predators. Uh, everybody I'll, seems to be looking forward to this uh, series against the Jets here. Uh, they are the the biggest favorite. They are the out number of any one of the teams left. They are the number one seed overall. Uh, in they the got tournament. a shot of getting beat here. Well, yeah, they do. 
Pecorini is a stud, all right? But he scares me. There are games when that guy just sounds like he's not there and people score all over him. And then there are other games where he just says, I'm going to be a wall, okay? Trump, you want a wall? We got one in Nashville, and you're not getting through it. <laughs> and that's just it. That's a fact. Okay. Okay. If, if we can get four games every series where Pekka says you're not scoring, the Predators will win the Stanley Cup. Ooh. They go, they no, they go got, as he they goes. They got 12 games left. Yeah. They, got they, 12 wins they go, go as he goes. But, but I promise you, there will be at least one or two games where he will give up three or four goals and get pulled. Yeah, I could see it. I it's happened it. in every series almost. It's, and I, see, I don't know that much about hockey, but it, it has become entertaining because there's such momentum shifts, yep. and it happens so fast. I really you know? wish we lived in a place that had a professional hockey team. I really do. That would be something that I would spend money on being season ticket holder in. Does, does South Haven not count? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need an HL hockey. I don't do – you know me. I don't do minor yeah. league systems. I no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the Commission on College Basketball right quick. Uh, Commission on College Basketball, fun, uh, they're fronted by Condoleezza Rice. They have recommended the following to the NCAA. All right, so this is like the summarized version. One, they said that colleges need to end the one and done. Now, they understand that it's the NBA that set that in place. Yeah, it's not a college rule. They, yeah, they discussed all sorts of different options, whereas uh, if you go to college, then you can't leave for the NBA until whatever but, time period. But how do you enforce or, that? I, I don't know how you enforce it. I think you have to work with the NBA on this. Yeah, you've like, got to have the That's the only NBA way that itself. you can do this. And so uh, after that, players can return to school if they go undrafted. So it, that's – Again, you got to work with agents. You got to work with whatever. They did say number three, engagement with agents starts in high school. So they start looking at, hey, do I have the skills or the talent necessary to get to the NBA right now, or is somebody just feeding me a line of crap? Like they they start engaging immediately. And here's the kicker that throws all of it to the birds: hold on, allowing players to profit off name and likeness until settled legally. They're still not talking about paying players. They're still not talking about finding a way to – like, they want – her quote, Condoleezza Rice's quote was um, that they have to get back in the business of being college athletics, amateur athletics. I, I don't know how you do that. Yeah, I don't either. And, and I'll tell you why she's saying that and they're pushing for that because they're pushing for what's realistic. Paying players – they know that the universities just will not do it. They will not do it. But if they allow them to get advice from agents, then, then these guys have a revenue stream from agencies. And it'll yeah. be under the table, but at least it's not coming from schools. Yeah, I, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. My I problem with this philosophy – now, I'm not the guy that wants to crap all over this because any change is better than no change, Okay. Yeah, The first rule makes no sense because you can't enforce it unless you get the backing of the NBA. Now, if you get the backing of the NBA, then great. Um, I think that's awesome. We've been saying it for years. They need to have the baseball rule. You can come out at high school or you can come out in three years. That's your option. Yeah. Um, I think they should have the advice of agents. What I want to be very careful of is agents becoming pimps. I don't, yeah. I don't want an agent – to work with LSU and to be tied to LSU and all, he sends all his clients to LSU. Like that's not how this right. needs to work. Um, th these agents need Otherwise, to be looking you've got at the, the same problem that the shoe company issue that's, was. That's right. That's right. right. They're only going to push kids so ways. So that means now the schools have to, the NCAA has to monitor uh, the school's interaction with the agents and how much of that's going on. So they're, they're creating even more work for themselves. Well, but I'm okay with hey, they need to work. What else, what else do they do for the billions of dollars that they make? I'm with you. It's just that no, I, put I don't them to feel work. like they were able to do the things that they're doing now. Like they weren't able to control anything. So well, you're just going to add but any, more elements that are going to be progress, basically uncontrollable. But, but allowing – at least allowing these kids to have agents to give them advice, to advise them on their playing careers is better than nothing right now. Okay? Yeah, and, and the idea of, of allowing them to come back to school if they go undrafted – 
Perfect. Totally fine with that. I think that totally has fine. to happen. I think that's ridiculous yeah. that it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's like it, so now you they, they do it have to have it go back to school. They do. Have so what, have I mean, what do these kids do now? They but they do have to make a, a, a relationship. See, baseball has a little bit of a problem. All right. To where you can go into the baseball draft. You can get drafted by a team and then say, uh, I didn't really want to go in the third round. So I'm going to go back to college. Yeah. The thing that sucks about that, though, is, is that. That team just wasted a draft pick. They don't get that draft pick back. Yeah. So, so if you want you this have to, to work, know that you're getting you, a guy that is not going to leave. No, huh? If you're if you're college, if you get drafted, no matter where you get drafted, you cannot come back to college. They have to do that for the NBA to help them, because oh, then yeah, you're going to end up with absolutely. guys saying, "I don't want to go play here," and I got taken with the first pick in the second round. I'm not doing that. You know, I'd rather I'd rather try my hand next year, and maybe I'll be a lottery pick. Nope, nope. You left like, college. Nope, you are. You went to the league. Yep. That's it. You That's don't get to thing. come back because you have to have a partnership with the league. It has to be yeah. good for oh, all absolutely. parties involved. Uh, you have to be working with the the professional leagues. Like that's just the way it works because the. It's basically like you, working with a yeah. bank to get you, like an internship for somebody or or just whatever. Whatever. Like you got to find a way to progress kids. Otherwise, there's no sense in them coming to your school. That's there's right. no, I mean, it makes no sense. Uh, let's move on. We've got, uh, we got just a little bit more time to go. Um, all right, so a tweet went out last night from the account at TX State Insider. It reads, breaking Jalen Hurts to transfer from Alabama football program. Sources have confirmed Hurts' father is indicated to uh, Texas State Insider that Hurts plans to enroll at Texas State this summer to begin workouts with the team. All right, look, the account has a website that doesn't even work. Uh, they've sent tons of tweets, but nothing on it is is legit at all. There's, I mean, it was just it was ridiculous. Uh, first, Texas State is not where Jalen Hurts is going to end up playing. Uh, Avarian Hurts, Jalen's dad, has no ties there. He's the coach at uh, Channel View High School which is right outside of Houston. Texas State is in Austin. They're about three hours apart. It's like 180 miles. There's, there's no Channel View player at all on Texas State's team whatsoever. It hasn't been for years. So the odds of that happening are not great. Um, now, we're part of the college football roundtable. I see Kirk's already in here uh, hassling me. Uh, before I get to my question, I want you to take a look. One, there was a post that Kirk put up last night. They got about 100 comments. Now, the average on our college football roundtable thing is like 10 to 20, right? Like, it's not much. But, but we, like to, uh, we like to hassle each other. But half of and, these comments had nothing to do with this, though. They were people talking about Florida and all this other stuff. Just all, yeah, just all kind of stuff. But, but, but it, all, it all brings up conversation, right? It all starts conversation because of Jalen Hurts. So – the deal is Hertz is 26 and two. He's led Alabama to two straight national championship game appearances. Um, but before the I SEC get into that, offensive I wanna, player of the year, 2016. In, in 2016, yep. Uh, let's take a look at his stats compared to an SEC quarterback that, that nobody really took seriously. And you'll enjoy this because it's LSU's Danny Etling. Okay. 2017, Etling was 165 out of 275 for 60% passing. 2,463 yards, 16 touchdowns, two picks. He had 21.2 attempts per game, averaged nine yards an attempt, a QBR of 152.98. His high was 249 against Ole Miss. All right. Last year against ranked teams, Etling had a QBR of 110.78. Jalen Hurts was 154 out of 254 for 60.6%, 6 about equal. He had less attempts, but... Uh, he had 2,081 yards, 400 uh, less yards, with 17 touchdowns and one interception. So basically comparable. 18.1 uh, attempts a game, averaged 8.2 yards per attempt, had a QBR of 150.75, which was lower than Etling's, but he had a high of 457.43 QBR against Mercer, and that skewed the numbers a whole lot. Um, Against ranked teams last season, Hertz had an average QBR of 123. Now, the issue... Can, can I... Hey, oh, stop. You're only right, looking at one part of the game. What is... 
What is Atlanta's rushing yards and rushing touchdowns? And what is Jalen Hurd's rushing yards and rushing touchdowns? Well, that's because you can't I was take those going to get away. Into. You cannot I, take I, no, those no, no. away. I'm with you. I'm with you. What I was going to point out against LSU, Auburn, Clemson, and Georgia, against LSU, Hurts yards per attempt on his passes. So wait a minute. Against the three best defensive lines and linebackers in all of college football are definitely the four in the best. SEC. The four best. The, the four. You want, LSU, you want to Auburn, at, Clemson, You want to look Georgia. at the four that he that he played against that are four of the best in all of college football. Okay. What? Okay. What does the yards per attempt have to do with that? I'm just like, telling. Like, like you're only you're going to say that these numbers are real low because they are. They're bad. They are. Yeah. It's, but everybody so, so, in the country was bad against those four teams. Hold on. Here's the issue, though. You've got the, – this is yards per attempt, right? So you're talking about linebackers' defensive line, which is going to slow down your running game, right? And that's what Hurts does well. So the issue that he ran they into also, with these – They also put pressure on the quarterback that make you throw badly. The, the issue that they ran into – Against LSU, he threw 7.1 yards per attempt. Against Auburn, 5.1. Against Clemson, 5.0. And against Georgia, 2.6. That's where the issue is. What is the fascination with, with where Jalen Hurts ends up playing? Like, I've, I've not seen so many people be so sympathetic towards a player that, yes, went 26-2 and two overall as a starter and did good things, but he had the number one scoring defense on the other side of the field for him both years and whose defense like gave him points and short fields on a regular basis. Why is everybody so uh, infatuated with this? Like, how does it start so many conversations? I think he's a really good quarterback. I don't think you have to throw the football the greatest to be a good quarterback in college football. We've seen guys be able to just run. I think the best quarterback in my lifetime that I have watched from an entire career statistically was Tim Tebow. He couldn't throw very well at all. But he's still the best quarterback I've ever seen. Play in college, give me four years of, of work. But he couldn't throw at all, Gary. No, no he could throw We're not in college. talking about the pros. No, he didn't. He could, no, he could throw in college, absolutely. He did a bunch Two, of jump the 2008, passes. No, the 2008 SEC Championship game. This dude threw absolute darts against well, yeah, Alabama, he had number games, one ranked defense. He had games when he had really good games, but he yeah. Anyway, Jalen Hurts has had games where he looked good too. Okay, and yeah, it's not no, just he, against like, Mercer either. So if if you go back and look at at and I'm not saying teams, Hurts is Tim Tebow. I'm not comparing that. But you you take you completely discredit his running. You don't look at that at all. And, no, 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 and no. The running is, is fine. Like, I'm not saying that he's an awful quarterback. I'm saying that a lot of people would have been able to go 26-2 and two the last two years if they had leadership abilities and whatnot. Like, that's another big thing about Jalen Hurts. I don't want the kid to leave. If Jalen, if Jalen was on LSU tomorrow, he would be the best quarterback to ever play at LSU in my lifetime. 30, almost 36 years of Rick, life. You think that? Name one better than him. I mean, I, I, Jamarcus Russell, maybe? Hell no. Hell He was a number no. one NFL draft pick. Just Hell because of what he did in the NFL. No, he? sir. But he didn't do anything at LSU either. He was just a big son of a bitch that just stood back there and threw the ball real far. That's it. That's it. He didn't run. He couldn't hit any drop no, he, down he passes. he showed and run. He couldn't run. He couldn't hit a slant. He had no accuracy whatsoever. All he could do was rear back and throw it far. And we had receivers that could go get it. They could go run underneath it. Well, that's and some some of that is Jalen Hurts' issue, right? Because he has no accuracy on on deep passes. So, but but you don't need to be accurate on the deep passes. You need to be able to hit slants. You need to be able to hit short routes and let wide receivers that are crazy athletic go. That's the way no, the college I'm, game I'm works. I'm with you, but he can't hit those either. So, oh, so that's you just where can't it becomes do anything. An issue. So, no, here's the problem. Here's the problem. It, it's Let's just make him a running those. back. I, I think I'd be all right with a running back or anything else that he wanted to play. because He I think wouldn't he be good play at a running back. Else. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. The reason he can run is because you have to worry about the threat of the pass. But if he's just standing back there in eye formation, he will get killed. He will not be able to run. It's not the so, same thing. 
So let me ask you this. If, he's, if he can't do anything well, he can't do anything at the quarterback position well, why block him at all? Because you know that's going to happen. You know he's going to be blocked to not be able to go anywhere in the SEC or anybody that Alabama plays for the next two years. If he can't do anything well, why wouldn't you want to play against him? Why would well, one, your badass defense not want to go against him? I'd want well, him to go to you, Auburn. If you look at the I'd A-Day game, to go to LSU. if you look at the A-Day game, Alabama's defense would have no problem with him going anywhere. Okay. Period. Okay. Um, but I'll take you. I'll take you and I I'll play you. I don't care about blocking him. It is an SEC rule that you it's, cannot go. And I, no, no, it's not an SEC rule. Go the, school, the school could say yes, we don't is, care. Yes, it is, Chris. The school could say we, we don't care. It is an SEC by law. I, I, I don't know how else to explain that to you. The school it's could Ron easily Morgan say we don't such care. such a problem getting to go to Georgia, right, because he wanted to follow Kirby Smart. It's, I, I don't understand why you can't understand that. I'm fine with him going wherever he wants to go, and if he wants to play quarterback, that's fine. Go somewhere that will let you play and let you play quickly. I'm down with it. I don't but, have he's, any but he's gonna, but he's gonna end up in some place way the hell away from where he grew up. Okay, he's gonna have to leave the South and go somewhere How way he, away. What, or, or he grew he's up gonna, in Houston. That's the South. The last I heard, last I checked, he's yeah, not so gonna go what, play why does anywhere. He have to transfer in Texas? way away from from where he grew up. He could transfer to Houston. He could transfer to any or, of those colleges or, in Texas. Or I didn't get to finish my sentence. Or he's gonna okay. have to go play at a small school or at a smaller league. Why can't he play Power Five football? He can't play. He can. You can go to the Big Twelve and be close to home. You can go to the Big Ten if you wanted to. I think he'd be fine in Nebraska's offense. I think Scott Frost would absolutely love to have somebody like that. How far away I is mean, Nebraska it, from Houston, as opposed to Alabama? Oh, I from have Houston. no idea. I have no idea. What is it, Lincoln, Nebraska? I don't know. I'm it look gets it up cold right up there in Nebraska. Lincoln, I just Nebraska, don't. I just Houston, don't. Un, I don't Texas. understand. This is my problem with the NCAA. I don't understand why these kids can't transfer. Coaches can leave Ooh. at the drop of a hat. Lincoln's twelve hours. No, I'm. I'm with you. So I'm that's, with that's that's across the country. It's on the other side of the world. Let's see. From Tuscaloosa to Houston. Let's see. Almost released kicker to Bama, offensive lineman to Auburn. Shade to any SEC team he wanted to go to. You can release them. You don't have to follow that rule. You can say, I don't care where he goes. Tuscaloosa to Houston is nine hours. Yeah, that's what I guess, because Memphis and Houston's about nine. So, nine hours, 12, whatever. Hey, Kirk, I don't know what – I'm talking about a damn bylaw. That's all I'm talking about. But the bylaw's like, I'm, I'm not, not where, written in they, stone, though, Gary. If that's they what we're want trying to, to release say. him, I haven't said that I have a problem – with him moving to an SEC school. I'm fine with whatever he wants to do. It's not a problem. Like, it, I, don't, I don't see why this is such a big thing. It's a big thing because I just don't like the rules. I don't like the rules, Gary. <laughs> this is not an anti-Bama thing. No, but you no, don't. Look, this whole thing is me. going to end up changing. Like, it's, it's going to change. Like, it's, it's all going to change because, look, Jalen's got great grades. He will yeah. be able to move wherever he wants to go this time next year. And this, he can, he can an, be a grad transfer NCAA, after next season. This and not is an a, NCAA yeah. problem. Yeah, but then he use, loses a year of eligibility by just just sitting behind Tua and not getting to play. How do we even know that Tua is going to be healthy this year? I mean, my God, he, he missed all of, almost all of spring with a broken hand. Like, we don't know. And that's the thing. Like, you never know what's going to happen in these situations. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what Kurt's trying to say here with the correct you Chris. Brought the, you, you, you brought this comment up. I didn't bring it up. Which comment? This whole story. You brought this oh, up yeah, about no, no, Jalen Hurts. No. I'm with you, but that's, that's what I'm – it's why I brought it up. You brought it it's up to say it, it's not it a big gets... deal. <laughs> Wait a minute. You brought something up to say – I'm going to bring this up just so I can say it's not a big deal. That's what you did? That's what we're going to do? I, yeah, I suppose so. It's, it's a very talked about topic that I don't understand why it is talked about so much. I was hoping that you could explain it to me. It's talked about because of the double standard, Gary. It's talked about because 
we're all about what's best for these kids. But then when this kid wants to transfer, if he wants to go somewhere else, a school gets to pick and choose where he goes and where he doesn't. Okay, Alabama so it's more gets of an to say, NCAA kind of. Well, this, right, is an, an Alabama this, this, is, yeah. this is an SEC thing. I don't like that you can block kids from anywhere. I don't like it. No, I'm, I, okay, I understand that. And that goes for any kid that wants to transfer from anywhere. If you're making the grades and you want to leave, your coach can leave at the drop of a hat with no repercussions whatsoever. And every kid that signed on to play for that guy is stuck now playing for somebody different. I don't like it. I think you should no, be able to transfer once with no I, penalty. I will tell you. No, no loss of, the, of scholarship, no loss of, of, of years of eligibility, nothing. One of the, the sides of that is Power 5 schools started giving out four-year scholarships. And a lot of this stuff is based on APR, et cetera, et cetera. So if a kid transfers from the school, it ends up hurting the school's APR, which ends up – possibly costing them as far as postseason money, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what college cha- basketball But you just football. change those rules. You just adapt those rules, Gary. Because those rules were but, adapted. Hang on. Because this transfer this. deal, this transfer deal has been a problem for decades, but the four year scholarships is like pretty damn new. Yeah, it's really new. So well, one of those so, so you can't go back upset. to that. You can't go back to that. Yeah, people were upset. Because you had people giving scholarships out, and the player gets hurt, and then you process them out. It happens all You're the ridiculous. time. You're but ridiculous. But that's, that's a fact. That's why Kids still get processed rolling. out because they transfer out. Like, Alabama's got players that transfer every year. So does LSU. So does yeah. Ole Miss. So does whoever. That's right. And I think they like, should be able to go anywhere they want to go. I don't think you should block any kid. This is not an Alabama thing, Gary. This is an all schools thing. Right, right. I know. That's why I'm worried about, like, not worried. That's why I'm curious about why the Jalen Hurts thing becomes such a topic of conversation. Because it brings up another opportunity for us to say this rule is flawed. It gives us an opportunity to say we have a problem and somebody needs to fix it. Well, it's, if it was I, I guess anybody else, thing, if, it, if, I, if it was Eaton at Georgia, we'd be having the same conversation. Well, we Eaton have a went flawed straight to rule. Washington and, and didn't have any issue. There that, was no talk but, about it. Yes. But Jalen hasn't even Georgia's, announced that he's transferring yet. But Georgia is not going to block them from Washington. If Eaton wanted to go to Florida, he should have the right to do that. If he wanted to go to Tennessee, he should have the right to do that. He's lit, let's say this kid has lived in the South his entire life. He shouldn't have to fly 3,000 miles away to play football because you don't want to play against him. He yeah. just shouldn't yeah. have to. But your coach can leave tomorrow and go play for the school across the street and nobody care, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. It is, uh, it is a strange rule. And it's I, not a strange do... rule. It's a bad rule. That's Okay, I'll go with that one. It's a bad rule. It's an awful rule. Yeah. Like there's, they they should have, you know what I find interesting is, uh, you know Bobby Petrino had a a non compete clause, in his uh, in his uh, contract with Arkansas, where he could not go and leave to coach another SEC school. That's a contract that Bobby Petrino and Arkansas agreed upon before it happened, and he is highly compensated for that contract. You want to start having clauses like that? Give the kids contracts, and then you can do whatever the hell you want. Treat them like yeah, employees, if you start paying the kids, and I got no go. problem with any of this stuff. No, I'm, I'm with you on that. You, you, you want to leave? Go wash dishes, but but I've been paying you. No, yeah, right you now, pay the kids. Then you can you need, you can block them, and you can have a non compete. All, all that we're having stuff all doing. these different conversations, but today today we got a bad rule, and I don't yes. care about APR or any of that other bull crap. Because those are things that can be changed. We can adapt how you grade things. I think based off I think of the that. problem. I think the problem that I had with this whole thing was that I'm looking at what is actually like. I'm looking at the actual rule. I'm not determining like I'm not judging the rule, and that's why you and I had such a misunderstanding to begin with. Is that this is the way it is, and that's how it's going to be for a little while. Rule, and I rules, wasn't looking at the other side. Not all, not all rules are, are good rule. though. We we have to no, we I'm have not to saying that, they are. that that we we've lived in a society where rules are terrible all the time. 
Yeah. And until you argue and scream and fight about them enough, they'll never get changed. <laughs> they just Otherwise, won't. everybody will be talking about something completely different, even though the topic is the same. Yeah. So, all right. Look, uh, it, we, we went over, but that's all right. We barely all touched good. the damn draft. We barely touched it. Yeah, man, we spent 20-something minutes on that draft. We talked about quarterbacks. Yeah, running backs a little bit. No, we didn't. We talked about one running back. Running back is the deepest position in the entire draft. You want to try and do this again tomorrow? No. I got things to do. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad. I wanted to do this a lot. Well, it, look, we, we can just take a few more minutes if you want to throw in a last-minute running back issue. You can't, like you, it, can't, you can't just fix it. You can't just fix it. I'm sorry. It's just I'm too sorry, deep. Chris. It's just too deep. There no, was, I know you did. So many I know you did. I know. There's... I know. None, none of them are time-sensitive, though. That one's time-sensitive. No, nah, we you're go right. Tomorrow. You're right. All That's right. okay. You guys know the rules. I'll go tell you this. So, hang on. All right. Go time ahead. out. I got a, a thing to say. This is my first round. Okay. This first round is mine. My Cleveland Browns. All Kirk, right. you, Kirk, you can get off because you're going to get on me for this. My Cleveland Browns have two picks in the first round. My New England Patriots have two picks in the first round. This, is, this draft's about me. I'm going to tell you two players I want Cleveland to walk away with one of them. I want them to walk okay. away with either Chubb or Jackson. Or a three play, or Rosen, okay? If they right. walk away with any of those three, I'm happy. The Patriots. The Patriots either need to walk away with Rosen or, or Jackson. And let me tell you a guy that they should walk away with. They absolutely walk. This guy is a New England Patriot. Shaquem Griffin. I just ripped my mic off, got fired up. Yeah, you did. Sha- Shaquem yeah. Griffin. <laughs> He absolutely is a New England Patriot. Uh, you, you could get him in the second or third round, though. I don't. I take him in the first. Really? Take him, with the, take him with the thirty-first pick overall. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get him. I don't know, man. And let me like, tell you I, why I, I, he fits everything Bill wants to do. Everything Bill wants to do. Bill does nothing but draft seniors. He fits that. He does nothing but draft college graduates. He fits that. He does nothing but draft uh, captains. He fits that. And he fit. He does nothing but draft guys who are these are football things now, crazy explosive, just freak athletes. A and yeah, he B, fits it. and B, he also fits guys that are nothing but maximum effort. He almost does not care about your skill level. He wants you to be crazy athletic, and you outwork everybody. This guy is a New England Patriot. Take him with the thirty-first pick overall. If you get him there, I hope he's still there. And and I'd take him in a heartbeat. That's all I want out of the Patriots draft. That's it. Chris, you have been fantastic today. <laughs> I love the draft. I love the draft. This is my favorite time of the when you're when you like the Browns, you gotta kinda like the draft. Yeah. If we well, what are you doing with, for the draft tomorrow? I'm probably just watching at the house. I'm okay. still trying to eat right. I can't go out. So. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Um, I really, really, really don't want to come away with Baker or Allen. I'm going to support either one. I don't. But want you're hoping one. that you that you don't grab either one. You take Bradley Chubb at one, or take one Barkley at one, or something. And, and here's the sad. There. I'd rather have those guys over Barkley because he's safe. If you're going to take the first round pick, just take Barkley. Don't take. The the Allen thing scares me. The 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 completion yeah. percentage scares me. And yeah, I think does. and I think Baker's out of the league in a year. I think he could be Johnny Manziel two point Yeah. Like I really think he could be. How many we'll quarterbacks see. how many quarterbacks look like him in the NFL? And I'm talk I'm not talking about size. I'm talking about the way he acts and the way he struts. The answer is zero. Yeah, there's there's not many at all. Actually, there, there are zero. The none, zero. That, none that act the way that he does. The answer is zero. There's been a so, lot that come in. Not one. Not one has lasted. You're right. You're right. Anyway, thank all you, right. bud. That's going to wrap this whole thing up. You guys know what to do. Go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. We will see y'all the next go-round. Later, buddy. <laughs>